in the following series of lectures, we'll be studying assets, bases, and solves, and we'll be doing and practicing a number of questions on asset bases and solves. To begin the lecture on uh, asset bases and solve, we'll first have to uh, let's start off with assets first. So we'll study what assets are. Now, the basic definition of an asset is that it uh, reacts with a base. Now, since we have not yet studied bases, so another definition of assets is that uh, they dissolve in water or in other words they ionize in water they form ions it's a molecule which uh, ionizes in water to produce H plus one ions so that's uh, one very basic definition of what an acid is that it's it's going to dissolve in water to produce H plus one ions now uh, we have a list, a very uh, long list of assets, but since we are focusing on O-levels right now, so uh, we'll uh, deal with a small list of assets, and uh, you must remember what those assets are. The, uh, the number one most common asset you're going to deal with is hydrochloric acid, and hydrochloric acid, so that's number one, it's the uh, HCl. That's hydrochloric acid, and whenever HCl is in aqueous state, that means aqueous means water. So it means it's dissolved in water. It's going to produce H plus one and Cl minus one ions. So it's going to break down and produce ions, and both of these ions will be present in water. Similarly, you have uh, you have nitric acid. Now nitric acid is HNO3 and whenever it's aqueous it's going to produce H plus 1 and NO3 minus 1 ions which is the nitrate ion and both of these ions will be aqueous as well. Similarly you have uh, you have number 3 at number 3 you have sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4 and that's also aqueous and it's going to produce, uh, this is also going to break down when, it, when it's in aqueous, aqueous state, it's going to ionize and produce H plus 1 ions and in this case it's going to produce two H plus 1 ions since there it's H2 and it's going to produce one sulfate ion which is SO4 minus 2 so both of these ions are aqueous as well. Uh, then you have uh, Phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is H3PO4. And whenever it's aqueous, it's going to produce 3H plus 1 and it's going to produce 1 phosphate ion, which is PO4 minus 3. And another acid we're going to uh, study is uh, carbonic acid, which is which is H two CO three, and when it's aqueous, it's going to produce two uh, H plus one plus CO three minus two and all of this is uh, it's only going to happen in aqua state um, moving on uh, let's deal with organic acids now all of these acids that we studied uh, right now the ones over here from one to five they were mostly uh, these are called mineral acids and mineral acids are generally strong so so these four are strong acids so I'll write the word strong next to each acid which is uh, a strong acid so these are strong acids whereas uh, the carbonic acid which is also a mineral acid this one is a weak acid a relatively weak acid and there's another list of weak acids which are called uh, carboxylic acids 
and these are called organic acids. Uh, since um, most of you haven't studied organic chemistry yet, so uh, I'll give you a brief description of how organic acids uh, uh, look like. For uh, let's, uh, it's going to look like something like this: COOH, where where R could be anything. It could be a molecule over here extending. So I'm just uh, writing an alphabet against it. This is the part which is called, which is the acid part. So it's going to, whenever it's aqueous, it's going to break down into its ions and it's going to produce RCO minus 1 plus H plus 1 ions and everything is going to be aqueous. So this is an example of an organic acid which we are going to de uh, deal with in a lot more detail when we are doing organic chemistry. Uh, but remember one thing that organic acids, almost all of them are, are weak acids. One thing so far we have missed out on is uh, what do we mean by strong and weak acid? Now, if if we are talking about a strong acid, that would mean that uh, the acid dissociates or ionizes. completely to produce a high concentration of H plus 1 ion. So, so if an acid when it's dissolved in water uh, we need to add in water as well. So to the definition. So the acid dissociates, ionizes in water completely to produce a high concentration of H plus 1 ions and we've already studied what those acids were. H2SO4 is one example. If you have one, let's say you have 10 molecules of H2SO4 then all and if you dissolve those 10 molecules of H2SO4 in water then all of those 10 H2SO4 are going to produce H plus 1 ions and in this case it's going to produce 20 H plus 1 ions and 10 SO4 minus two ions in aqua state. So it's going to break down completely. Not a single H2SO4 molecule is going to remain intact. Whereas if you're talking about a weak acid, then a weak acid, uh, the acid partially dissociates or ionizes in water and an example for that is H2SO4 we have already studied what H2SO4 was a weak acid so H2SO4 is going to produce H plus 1 and CO3 minus 2 ions but the problem is that if you have 10 H2 CO3 then only 2 are going to produce uh, 2 of those H2SO8 will remain intact Whereas only two might break down. Now this is hypothetical. I'm just explaining what weak acids are. Before continuing further on acids, we first uh, have to give a brief description and intro on bases. Now uh, let's first. Uh, I'll first tell you what bases really are and what kind of chemical compounds are bases. Most um, metal oxides, almost uh, not most, all metal oxides and metal hydroxides. Now, these are all bases. Some of them are amphoteric, and I'm going to later on tell you what amphoteric means. But uh, all metal oxides and all metal hydroxides are. Bases and what's a hydroxide? A hydroxide is something which has an OH ion. For example, if I'm talking about sodium hydroxide, that's going to be Na and it's going to have an OH ion attached to it. So that's sodium hydroxide. A metal oxide is it has O minus 2 attached to it. O minus 2 attached to it. So um, sodium oxide is going to be Na, which is in group 1. So that's plus 1. So 
the formula is going to be Na2 O and the charges are going to cancel out. So so you have all those metal oxides and hydroxides. Uh, let's write down the charges just to make things simpler. O is going to be minus two. So any metal attached to the OH ion or any metal attached to the O minus two ion, that's a base. Now what do bases do? The first thing about a uh, basic definition of a base is uh, that bases have this property that they react with acids to produce salt and water. So uh, in my next uh, lecture, let's uh, go through bases in detail, but I'll give you what uh, I'll explain to you later on what salt is. But uh, bases and acids react and they produce salt and H2O. Um, we can actually do a little uh, scenario over here. For example, I'll take one base which is NaOH and briefly, and, and I will take one acid, for example, HCl. Now, uh, to briefly describe uh, what a salt is, a salt is simply you have an acid and if you replace the, this is the acid in this equation. So, if you have this acid and you replace the hydrogen ion in this uh, molecule by the metal ion from the base, which is sodium over here. So, this is the salt which is formed. So, this is the salt that you get in this case plus you're going to get a, a water molecule next to it. So this, this is what salts uh, are. Uh, just replace the H with the metal ion in the base and you'll, you're going to get a salt. So this is one reaction, uh, one definition of what a base is. Another very important property of bases is that some, uh, very few bases dissolve in water so a few bases dissolve in water and most of those bases they are they belong to group one so generally group one um, oxides metal oxides and hydroxides dissolve in water for example sodium oxide is going to dissolve in water to form NaOH which is aqueous it's soluble in water so that's one it's going to form two NaOH actually similarly you will have uh, you will have uh, let's say K2O it's uh, potassium is also in group one so it's going to form a soluble hydroxide H2O and it's also going to dissolve in water to form KOH so to briefly give you an idea of how which hydroxides dissolve in water um, Here's a small list of hydroxides which are going to dissolve in water. It's NaOH, KOH, and that also includes rest of the group 1, plus there's CaOH2, and you also have BaOH2, barium hydroxide, and similarly there's one last which is NH4OH. All these hydroxides, they are soluble in water and if they are soluble in water these are called alkalis. Alkalis are bases except the only difference being that they dissolve in water. So these are soluble in water and they form alkaline solutions are formed when they dissolve in water. So these are called alkalis. And uh, one thing to remember is, if you remember what acids were, acids produced H plus 1 ions. Similarly, alkalis produce OH minus 1 ions when they dissolve In water, so they produce OH minus one ions when they dissolve in water. And an example for that is if NaOH uh, is aqueous, it's going to break down and ionize and produce Na plus one ions, which is also going to be aqueous, and it's going to produce OH minus one ions, 
which is also going to be aqueous. So, so remember one thing that alkalis are going to increase the concentration of OH ions in solution and whenever you have uh, an alkaline solution that would firstly mean that an alkali is dissolved in it and it would also mean that the concentration of OH minus 1 ions is high. On the other hand, if you had an acidic solution, that would mean that the concentration of H plus 1 ions is very high. 